If, for example, some ordinance came along and tried to close down Grace Community Church, would we say, oh, it's all right, we forgive you, we'll all go home and just forget the work of God? Not on your life. Not on your life. Not on your life. We'd be down there with every sort of legal thing you could imagine trying to prove that we had the right to exist. It's a matter of protecting the privileges that God has given us for the proclamation of his word. When did you come to the decision that you were okay with suing the government? How far back do you want to go? We understand that the world does not understand the importance of the church. The world doesn't understand that it's not just essential, it's the only hope of eternal life for doomed sinners. People have been very concerned to make sure people's physical lives are protected and the process shut down places where there's hope for their spiritual lives. The church is always going to be an embattled people, the narrator said, and it's true. Remember 2020? Y'all remember the two weeks to flatten the curve? Remember when we were told that masks did not work? But then they did work. But then we weren't sure if they worked. Remember that magical distance of six feet? Remember when we were told not to meet for gatherings of more than 10 people? When children were kept home from school, markets turned into Soviet-style rationing retailers, and the Church of Christ was told that they could not gather for worship? Yeah, I remember too. Yet it seems like many people have forgotten all the shenanigans that took place during those 12 to 18 plus months of the now infamous pandemic. Thankfully, society is more or less back to normal, and even in the most hostile places like California and Canada. But that does not change the fact that countless governments of the world shut down nearly all aspects and parts of society due to an illness that may or may not have been as deadly as all the quote-unquote experts claimed. Grace Community Church out of Los Angeles, led by Pastor John MacArthur, recently produced a documentary entitled The Essential Church, which follows GCC's legal battles with the city of LA and the state of California due to the church's disobedience of local and state health dictates during the 2020 pandemic. The documentary also focuses on the draconian measures of Canada, highlighting the two Canadian pastors in particular, James Coates and Tim Stevens to be specific, both of which served jail time for their rebellious acts of meeting for church. The film sheds much needed light on these three congregations and how their elders dealt with their local health orders during the very trying time. The film production is well done, the images are striking, and the pace is steady. It is narrated by a Scottish pastor, which always sounds great, who appears also on screen to discuss several older accounts of persecution from church history, most specifically during the Scottish Reformation. One thing to note before we get too far is John MacArthur. He's a very polarizing figure, and many love him while others, not so much. But even if you disagree with everything in John MacArthur's theology, his soteriology, his eschatology, that thing he said about Beth Moore several years ago, whatever, you still need to see this film and understand the threat that the gospel poses to the unbelieving world and the lengths the enemy has gone to both during 2020 and up to the present and throughout history to snuff out the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and his gospel. See this movie. More to the story. Originally, Grace Community Church, Fairview Baptist Church, pastored by Tim Stevens, and Grace Life Church, pastored by James Coates, all complied with the local health orders just like everybody else did, all the other thousands of churches across North America during the first few weeks of the pandemic. Everyone wanted to do what was right. Romans 13, after all, huh? However, after a time, it became evident that the sky may not be falling quite like some had prophesied, and many people, not just Christians, began to wonder when things would go back to normal and resume life as before. But during California's 2020, things were very different than many other states, unfortunately. To be clear, it was March 19, Governor Newsom issued a stay-at-home order where all non-essential businesses were ordered to close and people were encouraged to stay at home and avoid going out. Hospitals began banning visitors for patients. It is evident that everything and everyone, not just Christians or churches, were to shelter in place and lock down at this very interesting and trying time during the early stages of the pandemic. The 15 days turned into months all over North America, and many people were becoming confused and frustrated. No eating out, no working out, working from home, no movies, no sports, no beach, no hiking, and no church. It was May 8th that the California, state of California entered an early stage two of reopening. 
Some examples of businesses that can open with modifications included bookstores, clothing stores, florists, and sporting goods stores, not church. May 18th, some 10 days later, sit-down restaurants and bars were permitted to open all across California into their stage two of reopening. A few days later, May 21, casinos could reopen, hair salons, nail salons, museums, zoos, still not church. Day by day, things got changed. New measures and dictates were issued back and forth, up and down, nothing for churches in California. It was not until July 17th that many churches in California took services outdoors during the mandated indoor closures. This documentary highlights the simple fact that the church body is essential. It is not a non-essential thing like many other people or things claimed it to be. Even more so, restaurants and salons and museums are definitely not essential compared to the body of Christ proclaiming the truth to lost sinners. Pointing out this, regardless of what politicians or cultural leaders say, we as the church must stand on this truth. And this documentary does that. The straw that broke the camel's back was Black Lives Matter. It was the death of George Floyd in late May of 2020 that got everyone's attention on all sides of the political aisle. Black Lives Matter's riots erupted all over the place, including in Los Angeles, which was ground zero for much BLM activity. The film gets to the root of the issue of many of the health orders, partiality. In both Canada, California, among many other places, partiality was shown by numerous politicians not holding to their own rules and dictates, playing favorites with some organizations, businesses, while banning others to the point of even fining and threatening jail time, saying that Christians could not meet, but rioters and protesters could run the streets at large. This is hypocrisy, and it was seen by many people, not just Christians. It was seen vividly in June of 2020 when the mayor of Los Angeles, Eric Garcetti, not only allowed but encouraged the BLM rallies, so-called. The film quotes him saying, if you're a truth teller, you should too. Meaning Garcetti is giving justification for denying his own health orders and stand and march shoulder to shoulder with countless people in the streets of Los Angeles. During this time, the elders of Grace Community Church noticed this. As each week passed, more and more people kept coming to Sunday services without anyone telling them to or turning them away. The film documents their logical effort to unanimously agree among the elder board to officially open the church July 28, 2020, some three years to the day of this documentary coming out in theater. At this point, the proverbial cat was out of the bag. GCC and several other churches in Canada were defying the health orders in obedience to the Lord and not forsaking the gathering together, as is the habit of some. This was not the end of the troubles, however, but rather just the beginning. The film continues and documents many of these things and the troubles of Grace Community Church as well as Grace Life and Fairview Baptist Church as well. Many Christians who had sheltered in place for months saw the violence, saw the anger in the streets of the tens of thousands of marching, looting, and meeting in close quarters. It was only logical to meet for church. This documentary would not exist if Grace Community Church had reopened on July 28th and the city of Los Angeles left them alone. Yet, that's not what happened. From fines to threats of jail time to possibility of them losing any public parking spaces at all, the church was threatened time and time again by the county of Los Angeles. The documentary recounts court case after court case detailing many aspects that seem to have been swept under the rug by common knowledge. Grace Community Church was threatened time and time again and won lawsuit after lawsuit, setting legal precedent when many others had failed. The documentary also lists the don'ts from California government that all the churches would have to obey when they reopened, which included no singing, no shaking hands, no hymnals, no communion, and certainly a requirement to sit six feet apart, which means no hugging. All of that's utter nonsense, and we all know that now. We look back and think how preposterous and stupid we all thought and were going into these things, but it was a trying time. Grace and forgiveness are in order. MacArthur and Grace Church did not want to abide by any of these things, as that's not really church. That's not really meeting. That's not really practicing the one and others. The documentary moves smoothly as it tells the story of many church history persecution accounts, retold by narration as well as CGI effects. Stories like the two Margarets in Scotland, one older and one younger, who were both tied to a post in shallow water when the tide went out. 
The story goes that the local magistrates called them to deny the authority of Christ as king and head of the church, and rather confess the king of Scotland as head of the church. They refused. The elder woman was further out into the water, and as time passed, the tide rolled back in towards them, slowly. The water quietly crept up her body, reaching her neck. The soldiers called out to her again to recant her views. Yet again, the elder Margaret refused and was drowned. The second Margaret witnessed her untimely watery death at the hands of the king's men. She too was asked to recant. She too looked on, waiting, thinking. The men certainly believed that this young lady under the age of 18 would recant her views, especially after witnessing the older woman's death. The water crept up, her neck, the tide rising still. Margaret the Younger also drowned, seeking to honor her Lord and not deny him. John Bunyan is also mentioned in the interludes, the preacher and author of the world-famous book, The Pilgrim of Progress, who was in jail for 12 years for preaching the gospel of Christ. He could have gotten out at any point if he agreed not to preach, but he refused. Several other accounts are beautifully retold throughout this documentary, seeking to not only support the churches, the three churches in particular, in this film and their decisions, but also to help the modern church know that church persecution has occurred since Pentecost. The high and low point for me was the story where I saw Tim Stevens, a husband and father of eight and pastor of Fairview Baptist Church in Canada, got hauled off to prison from his residential home in Canada in broad daylight in front of his children who were crying and his wife looking on, hauled off like a common criminal. This was heart-wrenching for me. Thankfully, he did not spend anywhere near 12 years in prison, but nevertheless, this shows the insanity that some people are willing to go to to obey tyrants. A few cons. I'm a big student of church history. I think it's very important, and I know many Christians' understanding of the subject is pithy at best. It's small. It's not good. I feel that there was just too many cuts, however, from the main story to church history accounts. These seemed jarring at times, and the narrative was taken away of the COVID battles that raged in California and Canada that the main story was about. Yes, they were well done with computer graphics, but I felt there were too many instances and could be shaved off or edited slightly differently. The second critique is the film is just too long. It's over two hours and six minutes, which may sound like a standard runtime, but for documentaries, usually they run much less. Several times toward the end of the film felt like a great moment to finish, and it didn't, and it continued, and it continued, and it continued. <laughs> Not as bad as the 20 or so endings of Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, but it's close. It was about hour 45 or so that MacArthur proclaimed the gospel clearly and concisely for all to hear. And I thought this was it. I really did. I was about to get up from the movie and walk to my car. But then it continued and continued still. More CGI effects and other church history stories played out. Perhaps this is more preference than anything else, and maybe they'll release a shorter version in the coming months. But either way, this is a good film. I say, go see this movie. I give it an A- for overall rating. It is a well worth your time. To God be the glory. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new. Until next time, be against the world and for the world. See ya.